reference model at the top or whatever that thing is at the top that represents uh, the top-down direction that uh, the, your statement of commander's intent of where the organization is supposed to go, VA actually has done that uh, with the strategic plan uh, fulfilling that role uh, and connected to uh, nothing other than our long-term and short-term budget and, and subsequent refinement of that, the operating plan. So uh, very good. Um, uh, process and structural situation, I think, at the VA compared to at least uh, what I'm very familiar with and a lot of federated organizations that couldn't pull that off already, just with what I said. But there's more to the story of what our structure has allowed us to do. Uh, with respect to EA influence in the investment process, I'd say pretty much on that score we're nowhere. Um, uh, we have had a lot of portfolio management thinking and actions, and I'll explain all that to you in a minute. But here specifically what I mean by EA is the, the, the processes and discipline of producing all those artifacts and having the artifacts um, actually used or the extracts of those artifacts used in some way to provide data for decision making. We have not gotten to that point yet with enterprise architecture and in, in uh, what I have observed since while running development and now that I'm going to be running architecture. So it's not been used yet uh, in any uh, overt way that I can tell for that purpose. Uh, business owner commitment, responsibility, and engagement. Well, we have that. Um, uh, I think uh, we have that very clearly. Uh, uh, the uh, the uh, uh, last time I was here, the winner, I think, was the, was at the December December meeting or so, right? Uh, uh, Parham asked me to speak to you all, or to the group then, about the program management accountability system. Uh, it's the uh, management framework, actually. It's not a system. It's a management framework whereby we are assessing programs for their health and likelihood of delivery, uh, and whether they are likely to deliver, whether they're on schedule, and whether they're delivering at cost, et cetera. Well, there's a bunch of criteria, and your power mentioned the T21 work group. This came out of a work group that I ran uh, last summer. Um, so we ran those assessments, and one of the criteria is that a system in order, I'm sorry, a project in order to be a project has got to have an identified business sponsor. If there's no identified business sponsor, there's no project. Killed. Marie Antoinette. Uh, and that, that's actually how we've handled those. We've gone down from around 300 projects to, I don't know, something in the neighborhood of 80 by applying a variety of criteria like that, including that one for business sponsors. So it's not that we've magically uh, grown business sponsors overnight, although in some instances we did, and I can tell you a few of those. Um, uh, it's that we made it very draconian. <laughs> Someone had better, someone outside of OINT, by the way, business sponsor means anyone but a wirehead outside. So, so someone outside had better consider this project something beloved to them or we're killing it. It's that straightforward you know, and, and dead. Um, so, by definition, you're left with a residual that has business sponsors. Um, um, uh, we've been able to grow a few because, yes, we've had a few meetings and, you know, yes. Uh, we had to replace our entire correspondence control system for the department. Uh, we used some homegrown thing. We went over to a commercial product. And yes, we had some very successful meetings with the chief of staff of the VA and the executive secretary, the head, the executive secretary who runs the executive secretariat, talked them to their responsibilities as a business sponsor. And sure enough, they stood up to it. And we were rolling that COTS product out uh, across the board. By the way, an, an interesting nuance of that, whole, of that whole exercise in creating a business sponsor was an interesting discussion with them about uh, uh, are we going to modify COTS products, right? You're all familiar with that ongoing endless discussion. And we said, well, would you like a 15-month requirements definition process or a 15-minute requirement definition process? Which is it? If you all are willing to attest to take this product out of the box the way it is right now, you, Mr. Executive Secretary, and you, Mr. Chief of Staff, you tell me this COTS product that you know and love that runs at the Department of Justice, runs at the White House, runs at a bunch of places that they knew, if it runs well enough like that and those places out of the box, are you willing to take it that way and stand it up? 15 minutes versus 15 months, let's hear your answer. <laughs> they took the 15 minutes. They said, we'll take it out of the box. Boom. Had them sign a piece of paper, requirements definition finished, business sponsor identified. We deployed the system across the VA. Great. Worked fine. I, I think sometimes if you force it into a cost solution, you don't allow the latitude for 
agency customization, it probably doesn't work. Right. I mean, you know, and uh, you know, some users. I, I <clears throat> user acceptance is a business sponsor problem, right? Because the users all work for the business sponsor; they don't work for us. So, so uh, the the business sponsor is accepting that response, all of which was part of that 15-minute versus 15-month discussion, right? Full disclosure, pal. You want to take on the end users when all those secretaries out there scream about this correspondence control system? Are you going to deal with the training? You're going to deal with the um, business process reengineering, the organizational change management? 15 minutes, 15 months, which uh, uh, he took the 15 minutes and shouldered all that responsibility. So it's rolled out. Uh, so we have business sponsors. Um, and because of the strategic planning process, by the way, also, I'd say because of the broad-based approach to that, that also has contributed to that. Uh, subject matter expert availability and participation. Well, whether it's at the strategic planning process through some of the processes I just described to you, um, and then also PMAS, the Program Management Accountability System. So the, on the latter point, um, uh, we are requiring uh, that in order to be a project, every project must operate under an integrated product team, IPT, integrated product team. Uh, uh, it's concurrent engineering approach that all the stakeholders have to be identified on a project and work simultaneously on the project, not in series, not in series. You don't create a package and pass it to someone else. Every that someone else works with you to create and approve the package, whatever it is, the plan, you name it. Um, well, again, uh, with respect to just applying PMAS to, to, to projects, either you project have an IPT or you don't. If you don't, there's no project. Uh, now, membership of that IPT is specified, at least by uh, uh, type, uh, depending on the scope of the project and so forth. But by type, you've got to have a PM, got to have a, every project has got to have a warranted contracting officer, every project has got to have a general counsel, every project has got to have end users, every project has got to have a t uh, an engineer from our enterprise uh, infrastructure engineering group, uh, and every project has to have end users on the IPT. End users on the IPT from day one. So uh, when and you start talking about all this ethereal stuff about are we going to buy it, are we going to build it, the analysis of alternatives, yes, the end users have to be there and participate in all that. The lawyer has to be there, yes, because if we're going to talk about somebody's beloved Koch product where we might have licensing agreements, yes, the lawyer has to sit there and be part of that discussion. That's absolutely right. Uh, uh, are we going to do full and open competition? Are we going to do sole source? Are we going to do a, a brand name specification? Yes, the warranty contracting officer and the general counsel have to be there and sit through all that. That's absolutely right. Uh, if they don't do that, there's no IPT, there's no project. Anyway, so that brings the end users to the table. So in, in so doing, we're trying to institutionalize and routinize collaboration. Uh, sufficient EA staff and tools. Well. Uh, we don't have our EA tools yet. Uh, we do have a staff. I heard some staff discussion in one of the earlier sessions. Um, uh, if you look at the Gartner numbers uh, from the last summit I just went to a few months ago, uh, uh, if you look at uh, Gartner's definition of enterprise architecture, I would say it's very broad, in including solution architecture when they, when in Gartner's parlance. So understand that with what I'm about to tell you, uh, if you don't know. The, the, the Gartner numbers are uh, anywhere from two to four percent of the IT organization should be people working in enterprise architecture, two to four percent. And uh, the, they slide the two to four percent based on organizational size of size of the IT organization. So for a very large organization, it's at the two percent end. For a very small IT organization, it's at the four percent end, the, the inverse. Um, so for us, uh, if you applied that statistic, that would mean we would need about 140 people, uh, 7,000 of us in IT, right? We need about 140 in enterprise architecture. Um, we uh, have nowhere near that right now. Um, however, uh, uh, in standing up, or revitalizing or strengthening the enterprise architecture organization, uh, we're probably going to wind up over the next positions have been approved, and we're going to start advertising those for government positions. Uh, uh, contracting opportunities are going to be coming out. Uh, some of them, by the way, if any of you are interested in, in the T4 solicitation from the VA, that's going to be the principal multi award IDIQ vehicle uh, that we intend to try to buy most of our IT services uh, from industry. Uh, there'll be EA opportunities.